Hello to all my viewers. This is Dr. Dawal Mehta and today we'll understand how to run time series regression analysis in R. So for this we'll go in the interface of R. The first thing which we have to do is import the data set. So click on environment, import the data set from Excel. Browse. The name of the data set is ERDF. Click open, press import. The data set has been imported. In first column, we are having observation, GDP, export, and consumption. To run any analysis in R, we will have to create the scripts. From where we can do this? Click on this plus sign. Click on the R script. So I have already done this. Now we will attach the ERDL dataset into R. The command line is attach round bracket ERDL run. To run time series regression analysis, it's necessary that we install two basic packages. The first one is T series, and the second one is LM test. How we can install the packages? Go in tools, install packages. Write down T series. Make sure that your internet connection is on. Click on it, press install. After that, LM test. Click here and press install. Once the installation is over, you will have to activate its library. So write down library round bracket T series run. So any command in R you can run with the help of run tab or by pressing control enter. Run. Now we'll have to check the stationarity of the variables which are in this data set. GDP, export, and consumption. Let's understand the concept of stationarity. Covariance stationarity of Y implies that over time Y has constant mean, constant variance. Covariance between different observations do not depend on, on time T and it depends upon only the distance or lag between them J. Let us understand this concept. In the first term, plot the mean is constant the dark blue line so the time series with constant mean constant variance so you see the dotted lines the spread between the, the spread in the data vertically it's constant constant covariance the distance between the dark red lines is also constant so this series is stationary the second, uh, the second plot is time series with constant mean, the green line, constant variance. The distance of the dotted green line is constant, non-constant covariance. The dark red lines, now the covariance is not constant. Time series with non-constant mean, so it is having a trend, constant variance. The distance between the dotted green line is constant, constant covariance, dark red lines. Time series with constant mean, non-constant variance. You can see the distance between the green dotted line is now not constant and constant covariance. Distance between the dark red line is constant. So the first one is stationary second, third, and fourth. They are the examples of non-stationary. How we can detect the stationarity? The first is by visually plotting the time series and check for trend or seasonality. Second, by splitting the time series into different partitions and compare the statistical interference, statistical inferences. Third, can perform augmented Dickey Fuller test to check the stationarity. Let's start with the first one. Plot GDP. You can maximize the plot from here. Plot export. Plot consumption. Now we'll run the formal test to check the stationarity of these variables. The command line is ADF. ADF that is augmented Dickey Fuller. ADF dot test GDP. What is our null hypothesis? Just see. The null hypothesis is series is non-stationary or in other words, 
series has a unit root. Let's run the test. 1. See the p-value. Again run for export. See the p-value. Again run for consumption. So all the three variables are having p-value less than 0 0.05. What is our interpretation? As the p-value of all the three series is less than 0 0.05, so we reject null hypothesis and can conclude that all the series are stationary. So we can easily run the regression analysis between these variables as all the series are stationary at level. Now we want to run the regression model. How we can do it? So first we will specify the name of the model. Model 1. You can give any name to the model. Model 1 is equal to LN. Model 1 is equal to LN. Linear model, round bracket, GDP, tilde. So this, uh, uh, this symbol is located on left hand side of your keyboard below the escape button. GDP, tilde export plus consumption so the gdp is a dependent variable export and consumption are independent variable now why we want to run this type of model the reason for making such model is that we assume that increase in exports will increase the gdp and increase in consumption increases the gdp of the country we have specified the model model is equal to lm uh, round bracket GDP tilde export plus consumption. Let's run it. The next command which we have to run is summary of the model 1. Run. See the p value of it. Now we will write the interpretation. As the p value of the coefficients of export and consumption are more than 0 0.05. So we fail to reject null hypothesis, which means that export and consumption are not significantly affecting GDP. It is necessary that the p-value of these coefficients are less than 0 0.05, then only they contribute. Then only these independent variables contribute to the dependent variable. In our model, uh, neither of the coefficients have the p-value more than 0 0.05. Let's proceed further. After making model, it's essential, it's necessary that we test some assumptions. The first assumption is linearity in the parameters. Series of the dependent variable is having a linear relationship with the independent variable. What is this assumption? Let's understand. Export is having a linear relationship with GDP. Consumption is having a linear relationship with GDP. What other type of relationships can exist? The examples are quadratic, cubic, logarithmic. So here, the basic assumption is linearity. Let's proceed further. So we will test the first assumption. How we can do it? Plot. Model 1. Run. So it will give me the message. Hit return to see the next plot. Click the cursor here. Enter. And you will get the first plot that is of residual versus flat, uh, residuals versus fitted. See the dotted uh, the dotted points and the red line. It is necessary that this red line is straight. What is our interpretation? If parameters are linearly related, then red line will be straight. This line, red line will be straight and will superimpose the dotted line. This line, we will superimpose the dotted line. Okay. But the assumption of the linearity is violated as uh, it's not superimposing and that's the reason it is violated. Let's proceed further. Again click here. Enter. This is the plot of normality of the residuals. This is your dotted line and these are your points. What is our interpretation? If the residuals are normally distributed, then all the dotted points will be on straight line. This dotted points will be on straight line, but as they are not, so the assumption of normality is violated. Let's read it again. 
if residuals are normally distributed then all the dotted points will be on the straight line but as they are not so the assumption of normality is violated again click here enter now we'll get the plot of scale location and the square root of standardized residuals this is related to the third assumption which is of homoscedasticity in residuals as we can see that the residuals are scattered this one so that we can say that the residuals are not homoscedastic the fourth assumption is no autocorrelation of residuals i'm going to talk about autocorrelation in uh, upcoming videos uh, in this what is our assumption? Residuals are not autocorrelated. The command line is autocorrelation function ACF model 1. This is model 1. Model 1. And we will use the atomic vector, atomic operator, which is dollar sign. Model 1 dollar residuals. So you will get uh, the correlogram that is of autocorrelation function. We don't consider the spike at 0, 1, 2, and 3. These spikes are outside the blue dotted line and, and now we will write the interpretation. Interpretation. No spikes should be outside the dotted line. Spike at 0 is not considered. Some spikes seen at lag 1 and lag 3. So the residuals are autocorrelated. This is according to the correlogram. Now we will run the formal test to check that is there a presence of autocorrelation in the residual or not. What is our null hypothesis? There is no autocorrelation. And the test which we are going to use is Durbin Watson test, LM test, colon, colon, Durbin Watson test into round bracket model 1. Run. See the B value. It is less than 0 0.05. Our interpretation is as the P value is less than 0 0.05 so we reject null hypothesis which means that there is a presence of autocorrelation in residuals the next assumption is the mean of the residuals has to be zero how we can calculate it mean round bracket model one dollar residuals run and it's uh, almost near to zero and now we'll write the interpretation Interpretation is as it should be mean returning series. So the mean should be nearer to zero, which we can see. Let me maximize this. The mean of the residuals is zero, which means it is good. The sixth assumption. The independent variables and residuals should be uncorrelated. What is this assumption? Let's see. Export and consumption are your independent and we are having a residuals of the mod. So in this assumption, the independent variables should not be correlated with the residuals of the model. Now we can run this test. Uh, the command line is core.test. But before that, what is our null hypothesis? There is no correlation between the independent variable and residual core dot test write down the independent variable export model one dollar residuals core dot test consumption model one dollar residuals run it run run see the p value of of both the independent variables it is greater than 0 0.05 so our interpretation is as the p value of both this test is more than 0 0.05 so we fail to reject null hypothesis which means that there is no correlation between independent variables and residuals uh, between independent variables and residuals which is considered to be the good sign so this is how you can run time series regression analysis in r for more videos on r uh, for more videos on Ecrematrics using R, kindly subscribe to my channel. You can also refer my playlist in which I uploaded videos on data science, machine learning and artificial intelligence.
Please don't forget to like and share my videos. You can also join me on different social medias. Link given in the description box.